Okay, this is where we've got up to. We've broken up the architecture of our application because we've decided that we want to handle things using command buses and event buses. So we went ahead and created our first command bus. We created a command which was uh, save order and we've created a handler for that save order handler. And then at the bottom of there, after we've created an order, save that to the database, we've said that what we want to do is dispatch an event message on the event bus. And so that's going to be the asynchronous part of our application, a uh, bit that we've already worked on a bit, where we create a PDF, attach it to an email, and then fire that off. So let's crack on with that. What we need to do first is we need to go and create an event Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. And just like our command which we created, we're going inside of source, message and in there I'm going to create a folder for our event messages. So event and then we're going to create a PHP class. So this is just going to be a plain old PHP object. But we need to think carefully about how we're going to name this because we want to convey the fact that this is an event. This is uh, responding to something which has happened. What is that something which has happened? Well, we've saved an order. So we could call it, give it a past tense name, which is quite common, something like order was saved. But I prefer to sort of uh, specifically say that this is an event. So I'm going to call this order saved event. And the code for this will be exactly the same as what we've been using. If you remember our purchase confirmation notification, let's go and remind ourselves. So we had a constructor where we passed in an order ID and then we had a getter for that order ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut that from there. I'm going to go and drop that in to our order saved event. And then I'm actually going to go and delete that purchase confirmation notification because that is now redundant. We don't need that anymore. The next thing we need is a handler for this. So inside of source, message handler, let's create a new folder called event. And this is going to be our message handlers for event messages. So we're going to create a new class and we'll call this order saved event handler. Okay, and so, like I said in the previous one, because I want to allow people using uh, PHP 8 to follow along, instead of using our attributes, we're going to go old school and we're going to implement message handler interface. Okay, that's cool. So now, uh, again, like I did with the event just there, the code that we actually need for this, most of it is already done for us. If you remember our purchase confirmation notification handler, which is inside the message handler folder. Let's go and have a look at this. Okay, so we have a constructor where we are injecting a mailer interface. So we're gonna need that because this is where we're gonna actually fire off our email. And then we have this invoke method, uh, which creates the PDF and attaches it to the email. So I can grab all of those things. I'll do the constructor first, just gonna cut it. Drop that in there. Make sure that you are importing the mailer interface. Also make sure that you've imported message handler interface. Let's go back to purchase confirmation notification handler. And so inside of the invoke method, just cut all of this down to where we say this mailer send, which is around about line 36. Cut that. I'll drop that into here. In fact, I'm not going to drop that into anywhere. What am I doing? I need to create an invoke method. So let's undo that. So create a public invoke method. Our argument will be the order saved event. I'll just call it event. And then inside of the invoke method, that is where I'm actually going to paste that. So it's asking me, do I want to import these classes? MPDF and Symfony component my email. So it's going to import them automatically for me. We'll just go up to the top just to show you those things anyway. So we're importing Symfony component my email and MPDF MPDF. 
So a couple of edits we need to make here. Originally in our purchase confirmation notification handler, here we were calling get order ID off of notification, but this time we have injected our order saved event. So I'm gonna grab both of those um, references there. Notification, I'm just gonna change that to event. Decent progress, so now let's go and delete that purchase confirmation notification handler. So we're getting rid of any old stale code uh, that we don't want hanging around in our code base. That's gone. One other step, we need to go back to our save order handler because this is where we said that we're going to dispatch the event. Okay, so I need a bus just like in the stock controller stock transaction controller here we're injecting message bus interface and we just gave it a name of bus which meant that it will use the default bus which in our case is our command bus however now we want the event bus because we said we're going to add the ability for command buses and event buses to behave differently so we'll create a constructor and this will be message bus interface and we have to give it the name event bus exactly like so. Let's go and remind ourselves why. So if I do symphony console debug auto wiring messenger. Okay, so here where we see our two message bus interfaces, we have the original one, which is just our default and that's the command bus. However, if we want to use the event bus, then when we inject our message bus interface, we have to give it this variable name of event bus. And that, by the way, is derived, it's sort of done automatically for you by Messenger, by Symfony. If we go and look at our messenger.yaml file, it reads this and it converts it to that formatted variable, event bus. Okay, so hopefully that has removed some of the mystery of why that name exists. I need to actually make this a property, so I need to give it a visibility. So I'll say private message bus interface event bus. And then here I can actually do the dispatching. So this event bus dispatch new order saved event. This is asking me for an order ID. So we've hard coded one here for the time being. That will do us fine. And that completes our save order handler for the time being. Before this is good to go, we do have a little bit of configuration to do, so let's go over to our messenger YAML file. We now need to route our new message, our new event message. Uh, we need to put it on a queue. So here, we've just got the one message, which is save order. We've put that on our synchronous message queue. Now we want to do the same for our order save event, but put that on the asynchronous message queue. So I will copy that and we'll just edit it. Event order saved event. And then if I drop an A on the front of there, that should now route our app message event order saved event onto the async queue, which means that it won't be handled straight away. It'll be handled in the background. Let's go and try this out. Okay, so at the moment we don't have our queue worker running. So if I go and refresh uh, my database here, we can see that message has been created. Let's go and refresh this a few times and get a few messages in there. Okay, so I've got a handful of messages in there. So let's start our queue worker with symphony console messenger colon consume and then the name of the message queue which is the async queue and this hyphen vv here should output some information to the terminal so we can see if this is working and what's happening. Let's run that so it all fired off in front of our eyes rather fast there if we go and refresh our database then all those messages have been consumed. And then if we go to our mail catcher, we now have 13 emails have been sent. And so the way that this works is that you'd have this queue worker running all of the time. You'd make sure that it doesn't go down and there are tools 
to help you make sure that this stays up and stays working. And then as some people are using your application, it just gets handled in the background automatically all the time. So now if I just go and refresh this a few times, then that will just keep on happening in the background. If we look at our database, it's constantly being worked off. So uh, we're not even fast enough to uh, catch up with it and see any messages before it gets worked off. And so that now really completes our refactoring. We've created a command bus, we've sent a command to that, the save order command, and we've created an event bus, and we've created an event message for that, the order saved event, which we are handling on our asynchronous message queue. And our command, our save order, we decided that we were gonna handle that synchronously on our synchronous message queue. So still plenty more to cover, keep the suggestions coming, keep sending the pull requests. The branch for this one, by the way, is part eight forward slash event bus. So I'll again, leave a link in the description to the repo. So there, when you go to the repo, just look for the branch part eight forward slash event bus. And by the way, I keep the main branch up to date. So when I finish these recordings, then what I do is I merge the branch into the main branch. Okay, hopefully you've got all that. Let's keep going. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.